Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Tales of Middle-Earth starter kit? Following the 2022 starter kit, itself a continuation of Arena starter kits, the Tales of Middle-Earth starter kit is the next in line of products aimed at new players. These starter kits are meant to help one begin their journey into Magic the Gathering as both a learn-to-play experience and a gateway to a blossoming collection. To accomplish this, the Tales of Middle-Earth starter kit contains two 60-card pre-constructed decks, as well as, crucially, two Magic the Gathering arena codes to unlock both decks on the digital platform. But are these so-called starter kits really the best buy for brand new players looking to ignite their spark? Is there an offering in here that appeals to more than those dipping their toes into magic for the first time? And does the price of these decks adequately match their potency or lack thereof? Let's take a look, shall we? Each Tales of Middle-Earth starter kit contains the following. Two ready-to-play 60-card decks, one of which is the Gondor Green-White deck, and the other being the Mordor Black-Red deck. Within each deck is a traditional foil mythic rare card, as well as four non-foil rare cards. You'll also receive a Magic Play Guide booklet, two quote-unquote deck boxes, and most interestingly, the codes to unlock both decks, all 120 cards, to play online on Magic Arena. Now, the price on these is higher than the product line has enjoyed in the past, going for an average of about $24.95, depending on your local game store or online seller. Now, that's a pretty high price for a product aimed at players brand new to the game and just looking to wet their toes. However, one of the best features of this product is that you not only get two complete decks that have been designed to play well against one another, but you also get that code for digital redemption on Magic Arena, meaning that if you don't yet have a friend who plays or a good local game store, you can play this right away from your computer just by entering that code. If you do both, it's a great training tool as well. The two decks depict the factions of light and dark within the Lord of the Rings. Choose the green and white Gondor deck to fight for the free peoples of Middle-earth, or join the Dark Lord Sauron and his horde of minions with the red and black Mordor deck. Wait a second, is this more than just a product for brand new players? This sounds a lot like what was once known as a dual deck. Could this truly be a product that is not only great for new players, but also for established? What about financial value? Let's examine just what you get in these decks. As of the filming of this video, if you were to buy all the rares included in these two decks, it would cost you $59.81. Never mind the remaining 150 cards that are included, but these 10 cards alone are worth more than double the price of the product. There are a lot of reasons for this, the collectability of Lord of the Rings, for example, as well as the excellent card design, but what's more, in these starter kits, all 10 of these cards cannot be found anywhere else, at least not in traditional border treatment. These cards can appear in collector boosters, but there they will only come in their full art non-foil versions. This means that there's a certain exclusivity to the cards, or at least the treatments of these cards, that you're getting in a starter kit. And let's not forget, of course, that this product comes with codes to redeem digital variations on all of these cards. That by itself is simply fantastic. It's something that should be standardized across every single product that Wizards of the Coast makes for Magic the Gathering, but that is another story. At least we get the codes for redemption here in this product. It's a vital inclusion, especially for starter products, though I would argue, again, that it should be present in everything that Magic the Gathering puts out. Okay, so financial value looks good, and you get the code for digital redemption, but what about the actual deck design? How well are these decks constructive? How immersive is the gameplay? How does it feel down to sit and actually play these decks one versus one with a friend? Well, let's discuss deck analysis. The Mordor deck does a spectacular job setting a scene with cohesive mechanics for its pilot. 20 out of the 34 non-land cards in the deck are either dedicated to amassing orcs or capitalizing on goblin and orc synergies. This is a mechanic that may not be immediately easy for a brand new player to grok. Though fortunately, reminder text exists on all of the cards, but it is the first in many notes that I will make about how these decks veer more towards thematic 
dual decks than a product truly designed for a new player experience. The fact that this deck also contains cards such as Gollum, Scheming Guide, and Fires of Mount Doom, two cards that even seasoned players may have to make double takes on just to be sure they resolve correctly, adds further credence to this claim. But gameplay is actually a lot of fun, especially since the top end of this deck packs plenty of evasion and direct damage creatures and cards. With Sauron, Lidless Eye, the Balrog, Flame of Udun, Voracious Fell Beast, Oliphant, and Witch King, Bringer of Rune, all of which are cards that will ensure that your game never dirtles for too long, an issue that I often have with new player products. The Gondor deck is slightly less complex and possibly better for new players, but unfortunately, it also veers towards the less powerful of the two. There's still a few complex scenarios at play here, though. Mechanics like Flash and Reach are present via Galadrim Bow, and having to figure out that you can use you cannot pass before your blocking creature takes combat damage is also something a lot of new players might miss. That by itself is fine, but let's factor in that they'll also simultaneously be learning about food, exiling, equipment, the difference between pump spells and plus one plus one counters, not to mention even if they're playing this deck, they're going to have to understand what's going on in the Mordor deck. Flavor-wise, the Gondor deck has a delightful cast of characters, including Merry, Pippin, Rosie Cotton, and Landraval. All of which leads to a deck that's main strategy is to establish a board of creatures and have a win-con of straightforward damage-pumping rares via everything from Gandalf the White Rider to Aragorn and Arwen Wed. The deck also includes Bilbo's Ring, which gets an honorable mention as a card that ensures that games come to a hearty conclusion, as equipped creatures becoming unblockable means sooner or later, life totals will complete their journey to zero. So I feel that overall, in terms of deck construction and complexity, these are kind of a medium, which might not be a bad thing. New players, I feel, can still handle this, though it does have a few cards I might have left out due to overly complex mechanics for someone playing the game for the first time. Time, but in all honesty, testing these decks out with my friends, I as an established player had a lot of fun. Best of all is the fact that they are not grindy, slow games of underpowered cards. Far from it. The biggest downside, as mentioned, is just that some of the mechanics on these, or perhaps just the myriad of mechanics throughout the decks, can be daunting for a new player. Both decks come with 26 lands, which, while a couple lands too many, also assures new players are more likely to be mana flooded than miss their land drops, which in my opinion is the correct way to go. That's because when it comes to the new player experience, which is what these decks are supposed to represent, flooding is more welcome than being mana shy, as at least when we're mana flooded, we can still cast our game-ending bomb should we be lucky enough to draw it off the top of our deck. Both decks are solid, fun learning experiences. Neither is so powerful as to be capable of steamrolling the other, though I will acknowledge the Mordor deck comes close. But best of all, neither deck leads to games that become a grind fest. They play really well against each other, and I think that after a dozen or more rounds of 1v1, they would both end up being close to a 50% win rate each, with maybe a little bit of skew towards that Mordor deck, depending upon player skill. Now, something I've expressed a lot of frustration with in the the past is still present here, which is the refusal to include even a single complete playset of a card. And while I understand that Commander is now the way that most people play Magic the Gathering, and that is a singleton mindset, these are not Commander decks, and Variance is going to be a hell of an experience, especially for that new player who just isn't going to draw their bombs. I really wish that these were constructed more like an actual 60 card deck should be in terms of three ofs and playset inclusions. This would not only bring slightly more consistency to the gameplay experience, but it would let players know that four copies of cards is actually allowed in a 60 card format in the first place. The closest each deck has to a playset is three copies of the vanilla creatures Goblin Assailant and Knight of the Keep. While vanilla creatures are normally unwelcome in a pre-constructed deck because this is a starter product, I believe having them included here helps new players create a point of reference to compare other cards to. So I'm not upset that there's three ofs here, I just don't understand why there isn't the fourth copy, and I don't understand why we can't get playsets of other cards within these decks. In my opinion, it would just go so far as to make them more consistent and more fun to play and experience. 
It is worth noting, there are potentially better buying options out there for true new players. Namely, starter kits from prior years, as well as starter commander decks. Older starter kits are likely available at an extremely discounted price, yet still contain all the most important aspects for new players. Namely, two 60-card decks that are very well designed to be played against one another, and that Arena Digital Redemption code, which hopefully is still valid. I also feel that the Commander starter decks might be a better buy overall, as Commander is currently the most played Magic the Gathering format there is, and buying one of those will not only deliver a perfect starting Commander deck for a brand new player, but it will give them a Commander deck that they can play with against their friends, who may already be established in the game, whereas these two 60-card decks are little more than training wheels that, while a lot of fun to play against one another, do not even begin to give a new player the building blocks for a proper Magic the Gathering deck, at least not a proper Commander deck, which again, is how the vast, vast majority of players enjoy the game. At the time of their release, there were a lot of markups on Starter Commander decks, but I've actually seen those prices go down. And if any true new players are watching this video, I would advise to inquire at your local game store as to whether they have any Starter Commander decks, and if they are selling them for about $19.99 each, you might consider that as the better buy. For further thoughts on Starter Commander decks, you can of course watch my video analysis on the subject. While my channel has always advocated for lower prices on products across the board, I feel especially that new and introductory products such as this should have the lowest prices of them all. The fact that this product line as recently as last year had remarkably lower prices just goes to show how much this is designed as a collectible first and a gameplay piece and an introductory piece second and third. And that is one of the biggest faults against it in this review. And that is just one of the biggest faults against it in my evaluation. Final conclusion. While the Tales of Middle-Earth starter kit still contains some of the better introductory pre-constructed decks for Magic the Gathering players, the increase in price, as well as the lack of play sets of cards within these 60 card decks, prevents this from being a more perfect product. I actually rather like the medium level of gameplay created here with its cohesive, well-balanced decks. In many ways, this product comes across less like a starter kit and more like one of the old dual decks. Best of all, these decks come with codes for a full digital redemption on Magic Arena, giving you all 120 cards in two separate decks so that you can continue to practice and learn to play from home. If one is looking to buy their first Magic product, this starter kit is not a bad way to go, but if all all you care about is price and not Lord of the Rings flavor, you can always just pick up an old starter kit from years prior. The grade here is a B plus, which is elevated largely due to the high financial value of its 10 rare cards, which can pretty much only be found here. It is unfortunate that for an introductory product, a great deal of its value and praise is tied more into artificial scarcity and collectability, but that too is the subject of a different video. And I also want to stress that even with the high financial value, this grade would be a lot lower if it were not for the digital redemption codes that give you these cards on Magic Arena. I really, really hope that this is something Wizards of the Coast recognizes as a positive, as a net gain, and starts including that in more products. But that is just my evaluation, and now I want to hear from you. What do you think of starter kits? Have you purchased one in the past, and do you plan on picking this one up? Will it be your first Magic the Gathering product, or are you an established player looking Looking to get a game with a dual deck-like product or just collect these cards? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're in the market for other pre-constructed products such as commander decks, why buy off the shelf when you can build at home? Check out my video for a Lore of the Rings, build your own pre-constructed commander deck for less than $45. You can view that video by clicking here or in the links in this video's description. Though of course, whether you are buying a pre-constructed product or just the singles to build your own when it is possible, when it is reasonable to do so, try and spend that money at your local game store. It's where you play this great game and you're supporting your Magic the Gathering community when you do.
next time on Shuffle Up and Play. We're just keeping it casual, aren't we, gang? We're casual commander here. I'm Spice Rack, and I'm evading jury duty. My commander is Guyom, Master Chef. I'm Krim. I decided to build my Dromar the Banisher deck. My name's Evan, otherwise better known as Dark Pack Cosplay on the internet. I'll be playing Liliana Heretical Healer. Old, classic, casual commander deck of mine, Sliver Overlord. Mm, that's See, not that's a casual Urza. deck. Definitely <laughs> have a deck for you that you. is casual, though. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, a are you kidding me? What casual means to Krim <laughs> is someone holding guns named Pew Pew! <laughs> Mind bent. Well, first, I'm gonna make your Urborg make everybody have planes. No. Oh! So, Rise of the uh, Dark Realm. Do you wanna do that with the Ferocity on the board? Well, yeah, that's gonna be a little painful. <laughs> Coat of arms. So oh! Each creature. Uh, so anyway, I started blasting. <laughs>